Hi guys, this is Sophia. Um, today I'm going to talk about the basics of painting minis. This knowledge and tricks that I've learned over time will help you in the long run, not just for painting miniatures, but for any visual artwork. Now grab a brush and let's explore. Number one, anchor your arms and hands. Put your both elbows firmly on the table. Extend the fingers that you're holding the mini with and use the pinky finger of your other hand to provide a stable base and keep your brush hand steady. You don't want your hands to be just floating around. It'll be harder to paint the tiny details of your minis. Number two, choose the right brush. Okay, I mean, so it's really obvious, but a lot of times people forget that they're using way too small or way too big of a brush for what they're painting. For a bigger and wider surface like this piece of rhino, you need to use a big brush so you can paint the whole surface with less brush strokes. I mean, this is kind of silly. Save your small brushes for detail work. This isn't big of a deal with oil or watercolor painting, but with acrylics like Citadel paint, they're very time sensitive. And if you're using a brush that's too small, you're asking for a clumpy mess. Number three, test your color scheme. Oftentimes, I do not hesitate to mix and match my own color scheme, but sometimes I do second guess. So in that case, I paint the surfaces that'll be covered when you put your minis together. For instance, here I'm testing out the color on the joint of an orc's neck and head. This paint is a mixture of Skarsnik Green and Amsterdam's Pearl Green acrylic paint. Side note, if you're using Citadel paint, the difference between before and after it's dried won't change much. But if you choose to go with other acrylic brands, Make sure you know what it's going to look like after it's dried. The color can drastically change as it dries. Normally, the paint will look darker when it's applied versus when it's dried. Come on, we all have a ton of extra sprues. Test your color scheme on those before you start painting your precious minis. Simple green costs money. Number four, understand the mold. It's super easy to cover up the fine details when you're first painting. It's important to work under a strong, bright light so you can catch all the details that'll make your work look clean and professional. This is a Dark Angel Smash Master. You can't really see his face under the primer. The lighting doesn't help. Now, with the brighter light, we can see his details easier. Also, if you have a close-up picture of the unpainted mini, you can remember what those details are supposed to look like. So grab your phone and take a picture before you paint. There are all those creases and fine details like this shoulder scroll that I want to save. Only under a strong lighting you can distinguish where the borders are. Number five, turn your brush and minis as you paint. If you keep painting with the same side of your brush, the brush can lose its fine detail point and that defeats the purpose of having the fine tip brushes. To maintain the fine tip of your brushes, make sure you turn the brush as you paint. You'll end up saving money because your brush will last longer and you'll be able to paint the details easier. Also, you can see I'm constantly turning the model to find the best angle to paint. My brush hand doesn't turn to meet the model, I turn the model to meet my brush hand. Can you tell that I'm really turning my brush as I paint? Here's a slow-mo in case you missed it.
Okay, time for a quick sidebar. Here I am trying to draw a circle without turning the paper versus turning the paper and keeping my hand in the same position. So it may seem kind of pointless on a large scale, but let's not forget we're dealing with those tiny devils. This trick comes in handy, especially when you try to write on a scroll. But I mean, seriously, animators and visual artists still use this trick on a large scale because it's easier to draw clean lines. So remember, turn the surface that you're painting so brush hand doesn't have to move or strain. You can also avoid some pain and discomfort in the muscle of your brush hand. Number six, control the amount of water. I'm pretty sure you've seen lots of professional miniature artists with nasty fingernails. This is not by accident, nor is it a fashion statement. Yes, they do that for a reason, and also yes, to avoid Clarence's situation. Do you love me, brother? You probably are familiar with people saying, thin your paints. Gradually add water to your paints and try it on your fingernails. They're similar to plastic surface and they'll give you an idea of how much water your brush contains. And if your brush gets dry, do not dip your whole brush in your water source. Think of it as you're just replacing the lost water and nothing more. Just a tip. Oh man, sorry guys. Anyway, on to the next thing. Number seven, patience, patience, patience. Here's a video of me painting the same Smash Master. Well, they say patience is a virtue and that's definitely true. If you want to get high quality results with your paint job, you can't really rush things. You need to take your time and try to enjoy the process as much as possible. You'll wind up more experienced and with more pride in your army. It took me almost an hour to paint the right hand side of his jump pack. So yeah, it takes a long time, but, but it's worth it. Well, I mean, that's it. So um, here's some background music and I'll catch up with you guys on the other side. <laughs>
you guys so much for watching. I really hope this video was helpful and I plan to make a lot more in the future. So please subscribe, like, and share. I'll see you guys next time. I'm Sophia with Sophia's Miniatures. You guys are awesome.